I'm Alan Summerford, and I'm second. My life has always been a very easy life. I've been blessed beyond measure. Uh, I grew up in church, was in church every time the doors were open, which was back then only on Sunday mornings mainly. But I grew up thinking I was a Christian all the time. This is not how it could be, but this is how it is. I was preached the law, don't do this and don't do that or you'll go to hell. And so I didn't do that and I didn't do this. And I was the most judgmental person you would ever meet. If somebody was going wrong, I was the first to tell them. Yet, I wasn't saved myself. It wasn't until after I got out of high school that I got saved. And not a whole lot changed in my life other than how I looked at other people, how I loved other people, how I cared about other people. I was already living in the Christian way. I was already reading my Bible. I was already praying. But I didn't know that you had to accept Christ. I was never preached to accept Christ. Well, even after I got saved, things tripped right along, going great. I went off to college, met a lot of great friends, had a great experience there. And then I came back home and... We'll see with our own eyes. He was always in control. I fell in love. We got married. And we had what I thought was a great marriage. Until on my birthday, she told me she didn't love me anymore. And it was the first time in my life that my faith had ever been tested. I didn't know what to do. I knew turn to God. I mean, anytime anybody else was going through a bad situation, I just said, well, turn to God, He'll take care of you. But I didn't know what that meant. I didn't understand the pain that they had felt. And when she told me this, I was shocked. I, I was, I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to do. I, I, I was about to go crazy. And to all of the people with burdens and pains, keeping you back from your life, you believe that there's nothing and there is no one who can make it right. About a month prior to this, I was sitting in a tree stand saying, God, my life is so good. And I was praying, I said, God, I praise you for everything that you've given me. I praise you for all that you've done. But God, I desire more of you. And I didn't know how to get that. I didn't understand where I was missing because I was active in church. I was serving God in every way that I knew how. But when I got married, my prayer life kind of slacked a little bit. I wasn't reading the Bible as much as I was. Sometimes I might go a month without even opening my Bible, other than when I was at church or in small groups or doing a church function. I didn't have a time with God. Well, I'm praying this prayer, and I feel like my prayer is going up and hitting the ceiling. I hear nothing feel nothing. Oh, well, okay. What do I do? Well, we're going on a mission trip to Guatemala. And I go down there. I didn't want to go to begin with. And that's kind of what I was praying about. Because I wanted to want to go to Guatemala. But I thought I was going to be leading them to Christ. I thought that I was going to be showing them the love of God. And I got down there and realized, no. I didn't have the love of God like they had. They had absolutely nothing. Yet they love and praise God with everything that they have. No matter what. And I was blown away by that. I didn't understand that at first. And then I started realizing, I was like, man, you, it's not just praise God for when He's good to you. It's praise God all the time. For the marriage that's struggling lost all of their faith and love 
And they've done all they can to make it right again. Still, it's not enough. So that prepared me somewhat. But I don't know how you could ever be prepared when the thing that I was putting first in my life, not God, but my wife, I was putting her before God, didn't even realize it. I gave her everything that I had. And I wasn't giving God half of that. And I kind of started to realize that, but all I wanted to do was die. I was never suicidal in any way, but I just wished that I could die. I wish that I didn't have to go through this. I wish that I didn't have to feel this. And there is hope for the helpless, rest for the weak, and love for the broken heart. I wanted to do everything I could do to save our marriage. I begged to go to counseling. She didn't want to go. And we finally got, I finally got it, talked into going to counseling. And the counselor told us to fast and pray for a miracle. And this had been about a month since she had told me she wanted out. So I'm thinking, okay, well, I've been praying for that for a while now. Nothing's changed, it's only gotten worse. But when she told me to fast and pray, fasting was something I had never done before. Not once in my life have I ever fasted. And the first thing that popped in my head to fast was a sun drop. I drink a sun drop every single morning. And that's the only thing I did every single day that I thought, man, I don't know if I could do without that. Well, instead of drinking sun drop, I started drinking coffee. And that coffee's kind of hot when it gets out of the pot. You can't just drink it and go like I did the sun drop. Then I realized, you know, if I'm going to sit here and wait for this coffee to cool down, I might as well be reading my Bible. I might as well be talking to God. And then that's when it hit me. Hey, there's that personal time that you have not had since you've even been married. And I said, okay, God. And God started speaking to me. God started working through me. And I began to see that God was going to take care of me. Through the scriptures that I was reading, God, people had been through bad times and God got them through it. And I didn't see how I was ever going to get through it, but I trusted that, I had faith that God was going to get me through it. And I began to kind of deal with things and I began to sort of pick myself up a little bit and realize that I've done all that I can do. It's not my fault. Quit beating myself up about it and pick yourself up and follow God. And I started feeling a little better about things and then I was knocked down again with my mom pretty much the same situation. And I just, God, I, I, I don't understand. I, I can't handle all of this. I can't do all of this. I said, God, you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta do something right here, God. I said, you know, my wife has ripped my heart out of my chest, and now my parents are going through the same thing. hit my face again and prayed and I started feeling a little better I mean, once my heart had been ripped out of my chest once it, the second time didn't hurt quite as bad because it was already I mean it was already in shreds there is grace and forgiveness mercy and healing he'll meet you I just kept, I just kept looking. I just kept seeking God with everything that I had, because I knew there's no other way. There's nothing else that could get me through this. 
And finally, we signed the papers to get a divorce. And I went to the prayer meeting at 9 o'clock on a Tuesday night. And I was completely the worst day of my life. And it just so happened the prayer meeting was on the day that we signed the papers. And I wasn't having a good day. I, I had come to terms with things before and realized that it's not going to work out. But when it finally happened, it brought me right back down again. And I went there and they prayed over me. And I prayed to God. And God lifted that burden right off my shoulders. And I left that right there on that altar and walked away and walked out of that door changed. Knowing that God has a reason for this. God has a purpose for this. Not knowing what that purpose was, but knowing that God was going to work through this. Knowing that He was going to take care of me no matter what. And so... I began to, to deal with everything. I began to try to move on, but there was still a hole gaping in my heart, wanting that to be filled. I would just cry out, God, I desire to be loved. I desire to love someone. And that was not possible at that time. And then I realized, you know, that hole can only be filled by Jesus. And I cried out with everything I had. I cried out to Jesus with all of my heart. Please fill this hole. Please fill it. When you're But I still did not completely feel like I was filled. And it wasn't until about a week after that prayer, I went down and walked to Emmaus. And over the course of things that had happened at Emmaus, I was reading some letters. And I was sitting there on the edge of the lake nice breeze in the shade it was only about 75 degrees and I'm reading these letters and I began to feel the love pour down into me and my whole entire body wept I was so overflowed with God's love for pouring into my heart that it was coming out of me in every pore of my body I've never felt anything like it but I know without a shadow of a doubt that it was God and he was pouring his love into me finally that hole started to be filled started to be closed and I knew that God loved me God cared for me and I could go about my life things hadn't changed much with my parents, but I wasn't going to let anything else, I wasn't going to let Satan bring me down anymore. One thing I learned from that is to put God first. That's why we say I am second. Is to put God first in your life. If God is not first in your life, is God, if God is not in your life, what is your life for? Why are you living? What are you living for?
but I want to be last.